What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. Now, a while back I reviewed the NX500 from Corsair, which was a PCI Express NVMe SSD, and it was crazy fast, reaching speeds of 3000 megabytes per second. It was very fun to play around with for a while, but unfortunately I had to send it back because it was just for a review sample. And now I had to go back to my normal snail paste OCZ Arc 100, which is just a normal SATA SSD with speeds up to 500 megabytes a second, which was a complete bummer. But now after a few months, I decided it's time to finally get my own M.2 NVMe SSD. And the one I bought was the 500 gig 960 EVO from Samsung. On paper, the 960 beats everything in its price category, but does it actually perform that well when comparing it to something like the NX500, for example? Well, we're gonna get into that right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. You're also able to get Destiny 2 when purchasing selected NVIDIA GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti graphics cards. So check out the link in the video description to go get yourself a new graphics card and a new game. Okay, so firstly, the reason I'm comparing the 960 against the NX500 is because the NX500 is the only other NVMe drive I have tested before. Also, the NX500 is more expensive and does have a lower capacity, but does have a longer warranty, so I'm interested to see how they actually compare against each other. Now the 960 EVO uses Samsung's VNAND technology that instead of decreasing the size of the cells inside the SSD, which will get you higher capacity but also at a higher price, instead uh, what Samsung does is they stack the layers on top of each other, which in turn gives you more capacity but does not have the drawbacks of reducing the size of the cells. When you have finally installed the M.2 SSD and everything is set up, you can go download Samsung's Magician software software which allows you to update the firmware which potentially will increase the performance because when I did mine it did increase it quite a bit. Inside the software you can also set up Samsung's over provisioning which will reduce the size of your SSD but will increase its lifespan quite a lot. You also have your smart tool which is the self-monitoring analyst and reporting technology that allows you to monitor your SSD's health to see if there's anything wrong with it. You can also encrypt your data to keep it secure and even fully erase it if you don't want anybody else getting access to it once you're done with it. Then you can also just see some additional information like how much data the SSD has transferred in its entire life cycle and a few others. One problem users usually get with NVMe SSDs are that they do get a bit hot. That wasn't really a problem with the NX500 because it came out with a heatsink, but most NVMe SSDs like the 960 does not. But that did not really cause any problems with my testing. On idle the 960 was on a cozy 39 degrees and on load it was at a merely 55 degrees. Now the temperature readings was through software, so it's not that complete accurate because some parts of the SSD can get hotter than the other parts. Also the temperatures depends on your system's airflow and cooling, so that will also play a big part. But if the heat does bother you a bit, you can get an M.2 to PCI Express adapter that will turn your 960 into a PCI Express NVMe SSD and it will look cool as well. Now getting to some benchmarks, I compared the 960 to the NX500 and my ARC100. I already know the ARC100 is about 5 times slower than the NX500, so it's just there to have it there. But what I wanted to see is how the 960, which is cheaper, compares to the NX500, which is more expensive. Firstly, of course, I have to check boot times. It's not really a valid test, but it's always a bragging right. 
So the ARC 100 booted up in 21 seconds, the NX500 did it in 10 seconds, and then the 960 did it in 11 seconds, so only one second difference there. I also tested some real world copy speeds by restoring a Steam backup I made at about 100 gigs. It took the NX500 only 11 minutes and 53 seconds to restore the game files, and it took the 960 13 minutes and 49 seconds. And then just for a normal copy and paste test, I took the same 100 gig file and just made a duplicate of it, which took the NX500 4 minutes and 28 seconds. And for the 960, it only took 3 seconds longer at 4 minutes and 31 seconds, so it was extremely close. But now for some synthetic benchmarks, I opened up Crystal Disk Benchmark and ATTO to see what the difference between the two would be like. In Crystal Disk Benchmark for the NX500, I got a sequential reads of 2,834 megabytes a second and writes of 1,606 megabytes a second. As for the 960, it was a bit faster with sequential reads of 3,278 megabytes a second and writes of 1,700 and 5 megabytes a second. As for ATTO, the NX500 got sequential reads of just over 3000 megabytes a second and rise just below 2300 megabytes a second. As for the 960, I got significantly lower writes at 1648 megabytes a second, but reach was faster at 3263 megabytes a second. Also, with the transfer rate of the 960, it was good, but it wasn't really consistent. When I got to bigger files, the 960 did fall behind, whereas the NX500 was constant through all of the file sizes. This wasn't really that big of a deal, but we did see it with the Steam Backup Restore, where, where it took almost two minutes longer. But honestly, for the price to the performance, the 960 did perform pretty well overall. Now, in conclusion, the 960 is an extremely good product for its price. It does have a lower transfer rate at bigger file sizes, but that's not really too big of a deal. The NX500 is a better NVMe SSD, but it does cost a lot more. Also, what's nice about the 960, because it's a Type 2280 M.2, you are able to install it into a notebook as well, if the notebook supports NVMe. So you are not limited to just your PC, which is a really nice bonus. You do also get the pro version of the 960, which is about 10% faster on, on paper and does have a two year longer warranty but the price jump is just a bit too high for me to actually consider it. Now, honestly, you don't need to go for such an expensive SSD. You can get just a normal SSD with the same size for just a bit more than half of the 960, but you're not really gonna get that super speeds though. But if you just want rather size than speed, then a normal SSD is going to be a better buy. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it and found it informative. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you enjoyed, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. Also, if you guys want me to do more SSD reviews, please let them know in the comments below. And if you want me to review anything else, let me know in the comments as well. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see all of you next time. Cheers, guys.